What's up ladies and gents, it's Jason Bull here from Wild Air Sports and we are fortunate enough to have Yannick, who is Nino Schurter's mechanic, to talk through his race bike. We're at the finish of stage 3 of the 2023 Upscape Epic. Nino and Andri Frischnecht are currently leading the race overall in the, in the yellow jersey and that is certainly part due owed to uh, Yannick has been keeping the bikes in tip-top form. So there's a lot of fresh stuff, of course the new SRAM components which you might have seen uh, were released uh, very recently which we're going to get to talk through but also just overall it's such a clean setup you obviously pay yeah, insane attention to detail here. Um, starting off with the, on the overall setup, what, what's Nino most particular about um, on his bike? Is it shifting? Is it the brake function? Is it suspension setup? Well, maybe you have known last year we had some pretty um, unluck with all the tire yes, punctures we yeah. got so we did our um, lessons from that we we worked uh, with maxis together so we we got uh, or we got a special made tire only for for the epic uh, it's called cape epic version wow. so it's it's a little bit um, um, more protection on the sidewall but also on the surface all right so we worked on that and that's for sure uh, at the Cape Epic the, the, the biggest uh, theme we have to, to not have a bit of any time. punctures. Yeah, I mean that can, can completely ruin a race. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we did some homework and tire pressure is also quite important. So we run a uh, little, bit, little bit higher than usually. To be safer. Just to be yeah. safer. How, if you, if you know there's going to be a big change in temperature throughout the day, will you start the tire pressure a little bit lower? Actually not. Okay. So even that, we said, hey, let's be on the safe side. The riders, they know it, that the, the temperature increases the, the tire so pressure. it's going to get hotter. But it's, it's kind of, yeah, the rider style, they, they, they know exactly yes. how to ride. Them, okay, so. fair enough. And I see these tires are still looking pretty fresh in terms of tread. How many tires will you go through in, a, in an eight-day Cape Epic? It really it depends about how many thorns we, we get, uh, how many, yeah, we, we look, every day we look into the tire, so we see. Okay, uh, just to make sure there's, there's nothing that would upset the, the following exactly, day. Exactly, but we change now every second day. Just, uh, okay. put some just, just on make sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. amazing. Um, and the, just the specs of the tires, they 2.4 width. Exactly, so we have the, the Synchro Silverton 1.0 wheel sets. So it's a 30 millimeter Internal. in width with the 2.4 Aspen tire. And the threads per inch on? It's actually 120. But okay. just just the casing is different. Okay. So I, I can't really say how how much CPI they are. Okay, so, perfect. But well, the base is 120. Well, they seem to be holding up this year very well. Yeah. Yeah, cross fingers. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed. In terms of tool storage, I see there's quite a few little nifty uh, bits going on. Um, there was the Samurai that was in the the yep. crank set and so, the the Topeak pump. What's all going on inside the the Topeak um, pump? So is it just a pump? It's just a pump. So okay. we split up the. The, the, the gears or the tools what what the uh, Andre and Nino and is carrying carries. on so Andre has a, um, a tube in the saddlebag then some zip ties he has a, a tire just uh, okay. cut it um, okay uh, just a small little tire okay. piece in case you need to put a boot on the inside exactly okay that's smart so um, Nino got uh, just a pump they both carry a CO2 cartridge in, okay, the, in the pocket. pocket. Nino got the, the GPS transponder yeah. and then three summarize on each bike. Like for plugging quick plugging, as fast as you can. Then a little knife to, okay. uh, to cut, to cut the, the plug. Plugs, okay. uh, some power locks and also one rider has the tool. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's our setup. Super. And for sure, duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> You never know <laughs> what happens out there. That is a uh, yeah, that's super dialed and, and clearly very well um, well thought through. What else can we talk through? Suspension setup. I see there's there's new decals on the on the fork. Are the internals what uh, anyone can buy at the shops, or is there something something special in there? For stay now? tuned. Okay, so stay tuned. Keep an ear out, everybody. Um, that's very exciting to see. Uh, 
saddle. Nothing looks too crazy around his, his saddle setup and, and yeah, dropper seat post. It's, it's literally uh, a setup which uh, we're gonna race also on the World Cups. Okay. For sure, not the fancy tools and duct tape. Might be a little bit, yeah. Uh, only one bottle cage for Cape Epic. They like to to ride it with two yeah. bottle cages. Um, suspension setup slightly less uh, less pressure. pressure than a World Cup. Exactly, just to to be a little little bit smoother, and uh, they are not big jumps yeah. or rocks. Which, Fair enough. Yeah. Which they need uh, such a and just reducing the fatigue over the day. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Okay, and then. I think I think we can talk about the new the new Axis transmission. Um, we seem to have all the other bases covered. It looks really good. We've heard. Uh, I mean, it's only just been announced, but so far from what the riders are saying, uh, we've heard really good things about the the new transmission. So, what has Nino been most uh, enjoying about the new transmission? The biggest advantages for him? For him, that's a good question. I've never talked okay. about. Okay. Uh, well, we'll we'll try and get a word with him just now as yeah. well to ask. For you as the mechanic, what are you liking most? It's for sure. Uh, it's even easier to to work with on the drivetrain. Uh, it's less um, pay attention on the dropout, for example, okay. if, if it's True. straight or, yeah. or or whatever. If it's on, it's, <laughs> it's, it's on. Sorted, yeah. yeah, you can't really do something. And uh, just to work on, it's pretty easy. I mean, we we are experienced. Even last year, uh, we we had uh, some group sets for Nino. He won yeah. the world championship on it. So yes, indeed. So, so it's, it's we race are tested. we are almost dialed in already uh, for a longer period. But it's super smooth and it runs. We've heard you so can just easy. shift under any load. Full, full load, you can shift. Uh, now the app is, uh, is uh, up to date, so you, you can play around okay. with different shifters and stuff like that. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. How long exactly have you been on this on this group set for now? Uh, last year from August. Okay, all right, so that's... Like proper. Okay, so about six months, maybe seven yeah. months. Before, okay. before here and there some testing some yeah, yeah. But, uh, and the the overall durability of the the drivetrain that's a few months to bash it into some rocks and not that nino is a very untidy rider yeah. but i'm sure it's you're getting an idea of the durability and how long the cassettes last yeah. etc anything to say about that it's pretty cool so the whole winter we really had a, a, a good winter with snow and stuff but uh, nino was riding through the whole winter um i changed twice the chain just okay. in case but still the same cassette so it's quite durable okay uh, also the training camp uh he spent one month down here so it, it was a proper proper good proper use test in the, the, in the african uh, exactly <laughs> african conditions group set. and uh, so far we never had any big issues so we're gonna run you through a few of the details on the new SRAM Axis transmission, they're calling it. At least what we what we know from uh, what SRAM's been putting out and a few of the other uh, publications that have been testing these. So it's the on the mountain biking group set. The biggest change is with the derailleur mount. You now no longer have a hanger. SRAM were pretty smart in releasing their universal derailleur hanger a couple of years ago. It meant that a large majority of frame manufacturers have now adapted their frame designs to be able to fit that universal derailleur hanger and that means that it's prepared for this direct mount derailleur to come on. There's been a lot of questions about the durability now. You don't have a hanger to um, give way in the case of an impact but from the tests we've seen these things are incredibly incredibly resilient. Uh, the derailleur is actually able to move back in the event of an impact so it does have a bit of give, and this, but the ability to take side load is greatly increased to uh, previous uh, generations of derailleur. As for the cassette, slightly different uh, construction, but also a different gear ratio. So the steps from the fourth to the third, second and first gears are a little bit more evenly spaced, going up to the 52 at the end. And then the actual machining, well, the, the teeth are actually pressed um, in a big uh, in a big press from what I understand but the the detail on the on the side of the teeth allows the chain to shift a lot better under high loads uh, similar to what uh, Shimano has been doing with link drive their recent um, e-bike but also available for normal bike development um, it sounds like they're pretty equitable if not uh, the price or best shifting going to be going to the new SRAM access transmission um, 
So great to see the the derailleur seems to have been solved in many in many ways with this transmission. Uh, the lower jockey wheel sits a little bit more outboard from the, the wheel. It looks skew if you look at it from behind, but it actually just makes the chain line better to the front chain ring and gives you a bit more clearance around the tire. Because the derailleur is directly attached to the axle and so is the cassette, there's no need for any B-tension screw adjustment or high and, and low limit screws. Everything is perfectly uh, fitted on any bike you, you apply it on. So adjustability isn't, a, isn't something necessary and therefore you can't really set the derailleur up wrong. Once it's on, it's on. Um, there's a new chain uh, with a flat top that, that allows for the, that effective shifting under high load. Um, and then of course new shifters for uh, a new shifter design. SRAM stepping away now from the traditional looking mountain bike shifter, realizing if we're gonna be going wireless, we might as well just go with buttons that are more ergonomic than what a shifter needs to be. Um, it's good to see, we're looking forward to hopefully spending some time with it uh, in the future. That's, those are the main, uh, main changes. There's a few more, uh, more superficial things, um, but those are the main changes to the new SRAM AXS transmission. Uh, from what we've heard, there are a few available through Cycle Lab and maybe some other distributors in the in the country. So if you're hungry for the newest tech, um, you know where to you know where to find it now. Yeah. In terms of the the electronics, I see there's a, a unit underneath the, the headset here. What's exactly going on through there? Because the, we ride the Scott Sport with the twin lock yes, lever, yes. Uh, that's uh, a need for for Nino uh, to have it with the okay. left hand uh, okay. below the handlebar. All right. And for the dropper, we need to store somewhere uh, a shifter or yes. a button. So that's where we store the uh, button. The it's famous button. <laughs> exactly, in the grip, and therefore we need a uh, transmitter. Yes. And that's the... And that happens underneath there. Exactly. Okay, so that would normally be in the, in the actual paddle for the dropper post. Yes. Okay, yes. now it lives under and there. And that's the call blip, and that's the blip box. Okay. And we... I start to to store it in the frame, but you have to, or you need to have some access in case yes, something yeah. happens. And that's yeah, easy and access, that's, but out the way. Yeah, visually. it's not a nice look, but you can. I mean, you have you, to look for it to see it there. It's not yeah, not very you, obvious. You, yeah. you can um, in racing. You just need to be quick to change. Indeed, some, some indeed. And the new brakes. From what I've heard, there isn't too much different going on internally. It's just a different different layout. Yeah, so the layout is made basically to 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 get the, the more the cable, internal yeah, cable going cable in, yeah, easily. And we we run the oh, four on the four pot. And how has Nino been enjoying the four pot so far? Uh, actually, we raced that since two years. Okay. So we we tuned the old level brakes with a four piston caliper. Right. So we raced that since two years and uh, we like it. Clearly. A little bit more, more power. More of a power, yeah. I mean, tracks are getting steeper exactly. and braking is so important it's, for maintaining yeah. your speed properly, yeah. not, not spending too much energy trying to, to slow down. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, yeah, the setup looks, looks very, very polished. Um, in terms of bar width, what's Nino? 700. 700. 700 and minus 40 degree. That's it. Proper on. <laughs> Proper on, yeah. I don't Just know if I'd be able to ride that. <laughs> and his dropper is at one, 100. 100. Okay, yeah, 100. 100. Amazing. Well, Yannick, thank you very much for your, your time. Is you. there anything else that I've missed that you think would be worth noting? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's, we spoke. Awesome. Well, you heard it there. Keep, a, keep an ear out for some suspension things that may or may not be coming around in the in the future, but that is the, the race bike of Mr. Nino Scherter himself. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you.